Quick question. Which of the following people experiences time the slowest? Is it this guy who's chilling playing video games here on earth? Or is it this guy who's jogging at around 10 kilometers an hour again here on earth? Or is it this guy who's also chilling playing video games but 100 kilometers away from the event horizon of a supermassive black hole? Or is it this guy who's moving at around 99% the speed of light in an empty area of space? Or is it this guy who's also near a supermassive black hole but came too close and is now inside this black hole? Trick question. They actually all experience time at the same rate from their own perspective, which is the arbitrary time that elapses during this many cycles of the transition of cesium-133 isotopes, also known as one second. Relative to each other though, that's a different story. There's different ways for time to be affected. Physically, one of those ways is called relative velocity time dilation. Depending on the way you're moving, how high your velocity is, in which direction you're moving relative to something else, and the way that something else is moving relative to you gives you an added overall relative velocity, then time will seem to be different from the perspective of each one. Let me give you a simplified example. Let's imagine that we have a set of twins. Twin A is here on Earth, chilling, playing video games. Twin B is moving away from twin A at around 99%, the speed of light. The velocity is the same, constant, and is only in one direction. This is important, and you'll know why later on. Now, let's give them both synchronized clocks at the same exact moment, one to twin A and one to twin B. From the perspective of twin A, twin B's clock would have slowed down by around 7 times than his own clock. And the length of twin B would have also shrunk by around the same amount. But from the perspective of twin B, it's twin A whose clock has slowed down by around 7 times and whose length has contracted by around 7 times. Based on this, you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, then there should be no actual time difference between the twins. The thing is, the previous example immediately puts the relative velocity of the twins at 99%, the speed of light. In reality, one of them probably has had to do something. Accelerate, change direction. And once you add acceleration, then you do end up with actual time difference. So let's say that both twins are on Earth right now. Twin B decides to go on an interstellar voyage to a nearby star system that's moving in the same direction as our solar system. Twin B starts accelerating away and then reaches 99% the speed of light relative to Twin A who is here on Earth. Stays at that speed for a while and then once he is close to the other star system he starts decelerating so he doesn't explode and die and kill a lot of other things, and lands in that star system. By the time 10 years pass on Earth during this trip, only four and a half would have passed for Twin B. If Twin B decides to come back to Earth in the same exact way, then 20 years would have passed for Twin A, and only nine would have passed for Twin B. Remember, during all of this, from their own perspective, both Twin A and Twin B always saw their clocks running at the same rate they always saw their clocks running at. This never changes. What changed is that due to relative motion between them, once you add acceleration into the mix, you ended up with a difference in the amount of time that elapsed. That's why one of them is younger and the other one is older. You could say, though, that all of this is an oversimplification for what actually happens in real life. Twin B was traveling only in one direction relative to Twin A, but he may have decided to go this way, or that way, or this way. It's a 3D space after all. He may have decided to accelerate at different rates, and Twin A may have also done the same thing. This complicates the relative motion between them and how much time elapsed difference there is between them. But the gist of it all is depending on the relative motion between two objects, then you will end up with a difference in the amount of time elapsed. All of this, by the way, doesn't even take into account any gravity exerted by other bodies on the twins during the trip. 
Why? Because you also have something called gravitational time dilation. Depending on how close you are to a body in space, how massive it is, how dense it is, and subsequently how much gravity this thing is exerting on you relative to something else, and how much that something else is affected by the gravity of the object that it is near to, then time will also be affected depending on whose perspective you're taking into account. Let me give you an example. If you are able to stand on top of a neutron star, a super dense star that has more mass in it than all of our suns compacted into a sphere that's around 10 ish kilometers, you really can stand on the star, but let's assume that you can. Then because of the intense gravity of the star, someone on Earth will see your clock ticking slower than his own. From your own perspective, you will see the clock of someone who is on Earth running faster. The rule where both of you see your own time running at the same rate still stays in this case. If you are able to stand on this neutron star for 10 years, then for someone on Earth, 12 years would have passed. This effect is much more noticeable when it comes to the scariest objects in the universe, which are black holes. Let's imagine the following scenario. I give you a clock and I ask you to start falling towards a black hole, preferably a supermassive black hole, not a small black hole, because a small black hole would spaghettify you, tear you apart, kill you, way before you reach its event horizon, explained in my video why black holes are not scary. Let's also imagine that I start watching you fall into this black hole, but much, much further than the black hole. What I'm going to see is your clock will start ticking slower and slower as you approach the black hole's event horizon, the point of no return. And if I had a clock, if you were to observe me, you're going to see my clock ticking faster and faster and faster until you reach the event horizon. At that point, I will see you freeze forever. You will become increasingly redshifted to me until you disappear. But for you, time continues at the same rate. You pass the event horizon and you keep going towards the black hole's center, its singularity. And because time dilation seems to go up to infinity outside, I probably have had children, my children probably have had their own children, and those children have had their own children, and the universe could have died while you were still falling inside this black hole. That last part though might not actually be something that happens. Yes, if you do the calculation, it seems like time dilation goes up to infinity for someone who has passed the event horizon of a black hole. However, it's not really a clear cut case. The event horizon, the way I described it, might not even be the way I described it it might not even be an event horizon. The problem with black holes is that they are one of those rare things where you need to combine the physics of the very large with the physics of the very small. Relativity and quantum mechanics, which has proven to be very difficult to do so far. Basically, you need a theory of everything that explains all physical aspects of the universe in order to really say, yes, that's the way time works when it comes to a black hole. It would be a little bit easier if a person could go into a black hole and come out and say, hold on a minute, that's not actually how a black hole works. This is how a black hole works. But the problem is, because a black hole is a black hole, nothing can come out. You really can't do that. Here is the interesting thing. Gravitational time dilation and time dilation due to relative motion can combine into an overall time dilation effect. Take the example of Sergei Krakulev someone who has spent quite some time in space. Because he was away from Earth, gravity was affecting him less than people on Earth, and therefore, time should have been running faster. His clock should have been running faster relative to people on Earth. But because of his relative motion, his clock actually ended up running slower. And the overall result is the fact that Sergei is 0.02 seconds younger than people on Earth. 
With all of that said, we should now be able to answer the question, what is the slowest time? Because we understand time dilation. But there is still one thing that can affect time. This thing can actually change what a second feels like from your own perspective. Unlike physical time dilation, where time always runs at the same rate, no matter what you're doing or where you are from your own perspective. What is this thing? It is time perception how your brain handles time to explain some of this I would like to share a small story about myself where I remember time feeling very slow at a particular incident when I was a kid in third grade I remember being at the school's playground near this wing we were ordered not to be near this wing because they were working on fixing it, something which I ignored big mistake three kids unintentionally pushed the swing forward and that was the moment where I remember time feeling very slow I remember looking back and seeing this huge set of steel beams falling trying to kill me I remember running really fast I remember the steel beams missing my face by a few centimeters but still causing a huge gash from the top of my forehead all the way down to my mouth I remember this because that incident could have killed me but it didn't. Chances are, it's not only that I remember time feeling slow at that particular incident, time perception for me may have actually been affected at that present moment in time. When I saw those steel beams falling, something called the outboard effect probably kicked in and I started collecting as much relevant information and stimuli as possible in order for me to make the best possible decision to survive. That decision turned out to be run as fast as you possibly can. Turned out to be a very, very good decision. It might be a bit more complicated than that though. You see, unlike physical time dilation, whether it's due to gravitation or relative motion, where you can calculate some pretty accurate figures if you understand the situation, at least outside a black hole where it's very well understood, time perception seems more complex. There's all sorts of effects that affect time perception from things like age to drugs, medication, mental states, mental disorders, emotions, even your body heat and all other types of effects as well. Remember, it's related to one of the most complex structures in the universe. So because of the complexities of the human brain, we need to generalize a bit. And the generalization is the following. The more information you have to process, the slower time feels. For an example of this, all you have to do is take a look at the way animals perceive time. A housefly seems to process visual information four times faster than that of a human, and as a result, could be seeing the world four times slower than the way we see the world. In the same way, a squirrel probably sees it two times slower. A dog, 25% slower. A turtle, four times faster. There is actually an evolutionary advantage in being able to see things slowed down. Think Max Payne style of games, where slowing things down gives you an advantage. It allows you to aim better, kill things better, and avoid things better. The thing that sees things slowed down the most, though, might not actually be a living thing. We already use something that can see things slowed down more than any living organism, at least probably more than any living organism, and that is high-speed cameras. The reason high-speed cameras can slow things down the way they are is because they capture a lot of frames in a set period of time. The highest-speed cameras can capture trillions of frames per second. At that kind of frame rate, you can see light propagating through objects. Like this video here, created by an MIT group that shows you what a laser would look like being shot at a bottle at a trillion frames per second. However, you can't really say that high-speed cameras is the thing that experiences the slowest time. They're inanimate objects. They have no form of self-awareness whatsoever. But there is something that is non-living and can be self-aware, even more self-aware than we are, and that is strong 
artificial intelligence. Strong artificial intelligence may be able to go way beyond trillions of frames per second and reach the absolute physical limits of information processing, allowing it to experience time at an unimaginably slow scale. So with that said, what is the thing that experiences the slowest time? All you have to do is take that artificial intelligence entity and make an exact copy of it. Take both artificial intelligence entities and go into an area of space that would be affected the least by the gravity of other objects in the universe, possibly somewhere in the original super void and up to a billion light years across area of space that has no galaxies. This is important so that gravitational time dilation is set at the minimum possible level for those artificial intelligence entities. You really can't get rid of it. You also need to make sure that both artificial intelligence entities are moving in the same exact direction without acceleration. This is important so that time dilation due to relative motion is not there. Now, all you have to do is ask both artificial intelligence entities, assuming they would listen to you, to start a staring contest, with the winner being the one that collects as much information as possible from the other artificial intelligence entity. At that point, you've created probably the thing that experiences the slowest time both physically and mentally. That has been my take on what is the slowest time. Thank you very much.